Welcome to the third episode where I kind of mature in topic. And actually, I want to talk a little bit about my illustration here. My, I don't know what I'm titled it yet. Moon, Sailor Moon, Pretty Samurai Moon, something. But yeah, this is one of my favorite characters of all time. I don't very much remember watching the show, but I remember the comedy of it. It's like one of the first animes you ever noticed that in DBZ, which I need to do more DBZ art. DBZ is what actually brought me to become an artist because watching those fight scenes was so epic. Like, even though it's like way past my time or way before my time and I'm just watching reruns. I never thought something can be just so interesting in style and fast. And, uh, yeah. So, this, this illustration, kind of the same way, I wanted to branch out my style a little bit, make something a little bit more interesting with Sailor Moon. As such, in this, she's obviously some kind of samurai or something. Yeah, I like it being a samurai. I thought of making a samurai because because samurai shampoo. I don't know. And I wanted to actually change the way I look at characters. I wanted to not just copy someone else's character and make it make their style again which was already seen I wanted to bring I want to try and develop my own vision for a character even if it already exists I wanted to I want to try to explore my own creativity with someone else's someone else's creation which I see a lot of artists doing and I also see a ton more not doing it so I want to be part of the crowd where they create their own interpretation of one of their favorite characters. And mine is Sailor Moon being a samurai because why not? Never really get to see... There's a lot of ninjas and stuff going around and I love me some Naruto. But the samurai is pretty powerful too. More, and just as honorable. And I thought, hey... One thing that summarize like is like they're kind of like the lone wolves, even though there's like more than one sailor in Sailor Moon. But the summarize, they, I guess ninjas are like the lone wolves too, but they kind of more so run in packs. Summarize, they don't want to deal with nobody. They want to fight their fight and be on their way onto their next journey, and that's what I kind of do with this Sailor Moon piece where she's in front of a moon ha, huh, in a night sky which kind of reminds me of Samurai Shampoo almost every episode where they're just walking in the field and the wind's blowing and suddenly their enemy comes out and they just steer like steer directly at each other and then the fight begin it's like crazy epics one of the most insane 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 ideas that I just love it's kind of like it's like when you know something's about to happen and you just have to wait for it but it's about to happen and the longer it waits the more intense it gets unlike Dragon Ball Z which you probably will be waiting for about three episodes before anything happens. And about the time that second episode ends, you're just getting frustrated because no one's throwing a punch. But with this piece, I wanted to make it look like... Like she's ready for battle. Like she's just joined, joined the battlefield and she's in her position... Of which Sailor Moon sometimes takes. I don't know. I also wanted to recreate that as well. Her battle position or such, such. And where she's just ready to take off. Um, The color scheme was my favorite. 
because I want to try something new. I don't want to be a Sakimi-chan clone, but I did take some inf information. I took some inspiration from her color palettes, how she brightens up, how she heavily brightens up um, the, let's see, the hard edges and the soft edges are looking super clean, but I didn't want to take complete from that. I just wanted to just sprinkle a little bit on it. And then I also took some inspiration from from Ross Draws, which which I learned a lot in the face from him. Actually, I learned a lot from the face from both of them, but I didn't take from well I took from them, but I didn't copy. I took it, took away the parts that I didn't know, and I merged them into my own style, which. Like, I'm, like I said before, a lot of artists are just straight copying from other artists, which they will take and not take away what they need to learn. They will take everything. And so it would look like, eh, I want to say, a generic version of an artist, which for a while in 2016 was Saki Michan. But she's making a killer, and so I'm going to give her all her props. Amazing. But yeah, I wanted to put my own spin on how she looks even with taking what I knew from her and Rostra but only t like I said but only took enough to learn what I didn't know if that makes any sense but uh yeah also when I was doing traditional medium my favorite thing to do was be very messy. I think I'm a very messy artist. And that in itself is like something something real. Like you know what you're doing but you're not cleaning it up. And it brings on its own life. Like when I sketch I'm very irritated that those sketch lines have to go away. And then I struggle to find a way to bring those sketches, bring the character back to life without those sketch lines. Because to me, those sketch lines are also part of the character. I purposely put the lines there. Even if it doesn't look like it, I purposely put the lines there to give it some definition, to give it more character than what it had. But once I start painting over it, I feel like I lose it. I lose that sense of character. And it intimidates me. Intimidates me a lot. So when applying the color and the and the details and the values, I have to find a way to bring about that character again without the sketch, sketchy lines. So recently, I've been trying exploring not cleaning up everything. I wanted to keep it a mess to show that show that it still can have that feel of being a very successful painting and not having to worry about losing more character because I find every time I clean it up I go past the point of cleaning it up and it looks super smooth and I tend not to like it even if it's a good painting I like it but not as much as if I like it if it was messy and that, that's something I really, really brought out with this piece. And I'm going to try to do more with more pieces onward. Uh, yeah, the color. I love... I love the brightness of it. It's just... Very intense, very intense color palette. Because it's so bright, but so dark at the same time. It's like... I don't even know how to explain it. It's just both, it's like a wolf, like I said earlier, a wolf, and it's the color palette's ready to pounce on anything that comes near it, and it gives it depth in a way. It, it's definitely pushing back 
what needs to be pushed back and bring it forward, what needs to be bring forward. And this is my first time doing a pen like this, so I'm, I learned a lot. And I want to try to pull that into more of my later pieces, especially because I found myself, I don't really find myself, but I, I'm trying to not copy or, yeah, straight up, not try to straight up copy from another artist. But when I do, I want to, when I look for reference in another artist, I want to go exactly what I get there, what I go there for. Maybe it's like, how do they, how do they blend these two colors or how do they blend these two shapes together to make it look more three dimensional or create this item and then I'm out because I don't want to find myself looking completely like that other artist or still in that other artist still in from the other artist in a way that everybody can know if the way I feel like you should steal from an artist is to hide it you should hide it in your own skill when I steal from an artist I try to make it where I'm going to hide it with my own information so that I know I got this thing from this artist, but no one will tell because they didn't create it, but it's there. Such as, I don't know if I have a really good example for this one. Such as, maybe I'm going to say her eyes. Not even that. Huh. I don't, I don't really have a good sense for this. I guess you can say I stole the face, but not even really that. Yeah, I did. I did steal a face. I stole the face from Rostra, but I only stole the most simplistic, simplistic of it, which then I quickly hid away everything that was his and replaced it with what was mine. So I guess you can say it was like one of those Indiana Jones things where the artifact is right there, but if you move it, everything is going to try to kill you. So I, so you have to quickly switch it out, and that's what I did with this. There's a lot of him in this, but there's more of me. Because I'm not interested in recreating his art and his images, but more so learning from him and trying to incorporate it into my art, which is... Which is when artists or someone says to like an artist, that's what they mean. Take from them, but make it yours. Learn. Learn from it. Yeah, this this is one of my absolute favorite pieces. Um, the background, is it's pretty messy. I don't really understand backgrounds that much, but I find myself ever so slowly learning a bit more about them. I also find myself doing or being entertained with the idea of with the people around me of doing more background pieces or not background pieces but landscapes architectural architectural is that right yeah and uh this stepping aside from people which people characters creatures which I do need to entertain because I think that's a sign for me to learn more backgrounds and such, which the opportunities coming up to me to do more of the, for, of, you know, of, you know, the background and such. I keep losing my words. So I think I'll, I think I'll play with that. Yeah, and, but this is my, this is my Sailor Moon, Samurai Moon, pretty Samurai Moon piece. And uh, I learned a great deal from it. I hope to apply it to more paintings. And maybe you'll notice more in the videos. And hopefully I'll get to be I'll get to be able to. I will be able to steal less from the face and actually create it my own vision. Actually my next painting I didn't steal none of the face. I learned so much from this moon piece 
where it's mostly me and I learned how which elements that I like and didn't like from Saki Machan and Ross Ross and all that yeah so I'm excited for that as well and it's a Dragon Ball Z piece so yeah also to pay homage to uh it brought me into this game so yeah so as always no one <laughs> I bet no one's watching this but Enjoy, like if you want, subscribe if you choose. Peace.